Projects. This video will help you understand how to find the critical values using Table F uh, for a two-tailed test. So in this case here, what we have to visualize is, is that you know we have, um, you know, we're basically what we're establishing. We're saying was we have this certain requirement, this certain piece we're trying to find. We're trying to establish whether or not we would accept or reject that null hypothesis. And so they established it as being a two-tailed. So it's either one side or possibly the other. And so same process as the others. We identify our sample size. In this case, it was 18. We formulate our degrees of freedom, which is found by taking our sample size minus 1. So in this case, that would be equal to 17. 18 minus 1 is 17. We have a significance level, or alpha, of 0.10. So we go ahead and we bring our table E back in, or table F, excuse me, back into play and we take a look at it and we see that according to our table F, if we find a degrees of freedom of 17, all right, so degrees of freedom of 17, we are a two-tailed test with a significance level of 0.10. So we come over here, and, and in this case here, they're going to account for us the fact that that's actually going to be 5% on each side. So if it's 10%, then that's essentially going to be 0 0.05 on this side and 0 0.05 on that side. But the table accounts for that for us, and they explain that towards the bottom of the table. Um, take a look at the bottom corner there. You'll see that they, they, they express that they're already dividing that for you. So there's no requirement for you to divide that unless you were maybe doing some kind of application question. So we have our degrees of freedom, 17. We have a two-tailed test. And from there, we just do the same process. We, we come across, we find out where those meet. We come down, and we can see here that we are looking at a critical value equal to a positive or a negative 1.740. So why positive or negative is because it happens on both sides. We have a critical value right here, and we have a critical value right here. We understand that on our normal distribution curve, this would be our mean, and we establish that on the left-hand side, our z-scores would be negative, and on the right-hand side, our z-scores would be positive. And so that's why we have a positive critical value and a negative critical value. This would be our positive, 1.740 and this would be our negative 1.740.